Thank you for the inv invitation. And um, as you mentioned, my background in Swedish. So I'm going to tell you a little about this remote country up north. Uh, and I, I woke up this morning to the news from Sweden that two more people have been shot and killed in Stockholm last night. And there was also a third death, an explosion in an apartment building where a woman was killed in another city near Stockholm. And so this has become almost a daily occurrence in Sweden over the past few years. And it has changed both the image abroad of Sweden, obviously, but also the sense of security that so many Swedes for so long in this pe peaceful country uh, uh, held. And I, I would like to say a few words about the changes in, in Sweden as a background. Uh, the population in Sweden over the past 20 years has increased from 9 to 11 million and it's almost totally due to migration or immigration. So a very, before that, it was a very homogeneous country for a long time. Now it's uh, part of the world, really. And uh, the two million who have come are not obviously a homogeneous group. A lot of them are well educated and have integrated and assimilated into Swedish society. But also there is a large number of uh, newcomers who are uneducated, who don't have a job in Sweden, and uh, they basically rely on welfare and other means of public support. Uh, an increasing number of these people who have come to Sweden are also have Hold, they hold values that are pretty foreign to Swedish traditional values. And they could be things like honor culture, clan-based structures, strong religious beliefs. Sweden is a very, very secular country compared to almost anybody else. And a lot of them apparently also holds a disdain for Western values, which, of course, creates a problem in society. Uh, and if you follow the news, like I do, so the, the uh, stillness and quietness of Sweden has been substituted for a much more violent uh, image with gang violence and shootings and bombings that are rampant. And this is kind of strange for me to say, because it doesn't really fit into my own experience and my own self-image of, of the country where I grew up. And th this criminal culture that has uh, developed, it also feeds negative views of people from other countries, and it also feeds a need for immediate action and repression. And this makes Sweden look a bit like the rest of the world right now, which is also a surprise to a lot of us. And you see, uh, exceptionalism has been an important part of Sweden's self-image. And we probably all know about American exceptionalism, the, the sense of having a mission in the world, which could be debated for a long time. But there is this sense. And Sweden, had a more, much more peaceful mission. We held the high moral ground and gave strong support to the UN and spent lots of money on foreign aid. And deep down inside, we, we also had a bad conscience for having escaped the worst horrors of World War II. And I, th I think that's one of the reasons why this small country has been so much engaged in, in world politics and world conflicts. And in the 1950s and 70s, we, we saw ourselves as the most modern country in Europe. Uh, this, we spanned the wheels of the ex export industry and were implementing a number of social reforms that a lot of other countries admired. And the future looked really bright at the time. 
in 1975, multiculturalism became part of official Swedish policy, although the word was not commonly used at the time. And that year, the Swedish parliament unanimously voted yes to a number of new regulations, which basically said that immigrants could choose how Swedish they would like to become. From now on, all cultures were equal, and Swedish culture had no superiority in Sweden. And classes in immigrant languages started so that children would stay in touch with their origin, and newcomers were encouraged to start ethnic and religious organizations, which would soon receive the generous financial support from state and local governments. And I believe all of this was done in good faith. Tolerance was the key word. If, if solidarity was a key word in the 70s, tolerance quickly replaced solidarity and be became the, the new catchword in Sweden, because Sweden was tolerant in an intolerant world. And multiculturalism, of course, is a sort of ideology for a society consisting of many cultures. And migration has changed the nature of Sweden. Uh, an increasing number has not entered the job market, and in the 1990s it was apparent that parallel societies and communities were constructed on the outskirts of town, with high unemployment, reliance on welfare, and antisocial behavior in schools. And in the mid-90s, consequently, uh, Swedish politicians that a national integration policy was needed. One, out of this need, uh, a giant social projects industry grew that was fairly typical of our country. Billions of Swedish krona, or currency, were used to try to include immigrants in Swedish society. And I would say this was multiculturalism with a friendly wallet. Because at the same time, in the face of growing immigration, the country seemed to develop a peculiar blend of moral hubris and collective self-effacement. We knew what was right for people when they lived in Africa and in the Middle East. But when people from Africa and the Middle East came to Sweden, arrived in Sweden, we didn't want to tell them what was considered right in our country. That they had to discover for themselves. And it took ages before it was no longer racist to say that honor culture is a really bad idea. You, cannot, you, you can probably not blame multiculturalism for everything that has changed in Sweden over the past 50 years, but a less idealistic view of the world and Sweden's place in it with such a, a less idealistic view, we could have defined terms like integration much clearer. We could have told people to learn Swedish and to get a job. We could have avoided regarding people from faraway countries as exotic victims. Actually, they traveled from problems, not to them. But the combination of fairly open borders, a generous welfare system, and no serious demands on newcomers to become part of society has been an invitation to trouble for all of us. Okay, thank you. Okay.